It's the monkey gland. Monkey gland, you're thinking, I'm guessing that many of you will not have heard of this drink. It is an old drink, it is a real classic, and it's already gaining traction around the world. So we're kind of ahead of the curve here. It's already huge in America. I can tell you it's gonna be huge in the UK. You need to know how to make a decent monkey gland. In terms of history, there's not a lot about this drink, really. I can tell you that we know who made it. It was invented by a guy called Harry McElhone. Uh, Harry was a Scotsman who went to America and then came back to the UK, ended up opening a bar in France called Harry's New York Bar. It is a legendary bar. It's still there today. His grandchildren now run it. Uh, and he himself is a legendary bartender. So we know that he invented it in the 1920s. Outside of that, we don't know a whole lot. But hey, this is how you make it. Uh, and I'm gonna go for a nice little retro glass. Uh, and this is a fabulous gin-based cocktail with a lot of gin in it, which sets it up really nicely for us in terms of getting all the characteristics of our Worthing gin into this cocktail. So we're going to start by taking my cocktail shaker. Let me just get my glass slightly out of my way. And we're going to add our gin. And this requires 50 ml, minimum 50 ml of our gin. So let me get my measure and let's get 50 ml on the go. Here we go, and we're good. So there's our 50 ml. The next thing that we're gonna add is orange juice. So at the moment, this is looking like gin and orange juice, which essentially it is, but it has a couple of little tweaks that turn it into this incredible cocktail. So I'm now gonna add the orange juice, and we want about 30 ml. So if you've got 50 ml of gin, you want 30 ml of orange juice. So that's what, that's 10 to six, or a five to three ratio. So let me just measure out our orange juice, that's good. All right. Uh, and now we're gonna add a couple of other ingredients. The first one is this. Now, in my little bitters bottle, I have some absinthe. Uh, and in case you're not sure what absinthe is, uh, it is an aniseed flavor spirit. It's actually really quite strong. Often you can get absinthe up around 60, 65% alcohol. This one is not. This one's down around the 45% mark. Um, and uh, absinthe was something that was very popular in the 1920s, 1930s. It was banned for a period because one of the ingredients that were in there was deemed to be illegal. But now when they make absinthe, this is wormwood I'm talking about, they make it without the wormwood. But if you don't have absinthe, you can use things like perno or any kind of other sort of pasties aniseedy liqueur. We just want a couple of dashes, that's it. That's why I've got mine in this bitters bottle. So one, two, three, I'm putting four because they're really small dashes. It's equivalent to maybe, I don't know, half a teaspoon, something like that. And then finally, I'm gonna add the same of grenadine. So I've got some grenadine syrup in here. Uh, this is that uh, sort of pomegranate flavored sugary syrup, very red in color. Again, if you're not entirely clear what it is. And I'm putting a similar amount to the absinthe. So uh, just a few drops, here we go. All right, that's enough. So again, that's what we're talking about. Let me just take that off of there. We're talking about just a few drops around that half a teaspoon full of the grenadine. So we have all our ingredients. I'm now gonna add ice to my shaker and we're gonna give this a nice little shake. Here we go. Again, don't shake for too long, but when you do shake, make sure you do it with some intent. There we go. So we're going to take our strainer and I'm going to double strain this because actually I don't want any little bits of ice in this drink. And there we go. So we've got this sort of wonderful colour, this slightly orangey colour, uh, which comes from, when I say orangey, I mean more orangey than the orange juice. So it's got a slight kind of warmth to it, which comes from the grenadine. Just put those to the side. You can see I'm relatively low in this glass, but that's a reason. I actually chosen a glass which is slightly bigger than the cocktail because the garnish for this is slightly cumbersome, really, but in a 1930s diagram of how to make this drink, this is how it was garnished. So you take an orange. Let me take this orange, which I've already cut in half. I'm going to cut a slice from the orange, reasonably thick, because I want it to have some body. And I'm gonna put the orange slice over the edge, but it, it, it sort of hangs down, it needs to hang down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut 
a slice into the flesh at an angle there, which allows me to hang this over the edge like so. And there, ladies and gentlemen, drink of our future, this is a Worthing Gin Monkey Gland.